Have you ever made that special card in a baking soda packet, filled this into a ketchup bottle and heard about this secret trick with the whisk? In this video I'll show you 13 incredible kitchen tricks that almost no one knows but everyone needs to know. In the first trick I'll also show you a pretty genius way to separate egg yolks from the egg white. Because there's a really simple trick for this that hardly anyone knows. And all you need is a clove of garlic, because if you open this and rub your fingers on the garlic clove, then you'll have the ability to pick up the egg yolk directly with your fingers. So rub your fingers on the garlic clove a few times and then you can either lift the entire egg yolk simply with your thumb and index finger, but sometimes it might tear. So to be on the safe side, it's better to use three fingers. This way you can easily lift the egg yolk and then release it into another bowl. This brings us to our second trick. You need pizza sauce, tomato sauce or generally any kind of pureed tomatoes. But what do you do with the rest when you have some leftovers? Simply putting it in a fridge is one option. But usually it's only good for a few days like this. Another variant is to cover the can again properly. For example with aluminum foil. And then put it in the fridge. But even then, it goes bad after a few days. If you don't want to reuse it right away, a brilliant option is to put it into a larger ice cube tray and then place it in the freezer. Because the next time you need some of the tomato sauce, you can take it out of the freezer even weeks later and use as many pieces as you need. This way the tomato sauce stays good much longer than if you just left it opened in your fridge. And for our next secret trick, we're also heating to the fridge. Because we want to put something very special in it, namely a lemon. But first we need to prepare it a bit. Because the reason behind this is really ingenious. You shouldn't just place it in the fridge as is. But what we need from it is the peel. So if you're using a lemon normally and you squeeze it out for example, then you end up with the peel left over. And instead of throwing this away, you should use it in your fridge. For this, there are again two different options. You can either just place the peel in the fridge. Another variant would be to cut the peel into smaller pieces beforehand. This way you can cut it into smaller pieces and then place it suitable in a bowl. The peel obviously has other advantages, as this way the remaining little lemon juice that's still inside won't just leak out in the fridge making it dirty. So just put this bowl in the fridge. But what's the point of all this? Since various smells accumulate in the fridge, it quickly happens that it starts smelling unpleasant. And that's exactly what a lemon can help with. This way it smells always pleasantly fresh in your fridge when you open it. But do you also know this brilliant 10 second trick? If you have such herbs and now want to remove the leaves from the stems, then just pull them through a cheese grater. This way all the leaves are detached from the steam and you don't have to pluck them by hand. Our next little trick can help us enormously when it comes to cutting tomatoes. Especially if you have those small tomatoes that you just want to cut in half. You don't have to cut each one individually. Instead just place several on a plate or on a cutting board. Then place another plate or board on top, press it down slightly and slice through the middle with a knife. This way you can cut several tomatoes on half at once. As you can see with just one cut all the tomatoes are perfectly halved and we've saved a lot of time. The next trick can help us waste much less food because you're probably familiar with this problem too. You buy a few lemons because you need lemon juice for baking or something else. But most of the time you end up with much more lemons left over. There's a really brilliant trick for this as well. If you need the juice of half a lemon for a receipt, then use it for your receipt but instead of just putting the second half of the lemon in the fridge and disposing of it after a few days because you no longer need the juice, you can do the following. Squeeze the juice from the entire lemon. And now you can put this juice into an ice cube tray. You can do this with all the lemons you have left over, which are not going to last much longer. Prepare several lemon ice cubes and put them in your freezer. And here they are really long lasting. And whenever you need the juice of a lemon or half a lemon for a baking receipt, you can take one of these ice cubes out beforehand. Let it thaw and then use it normally for your receipt. This way you have to throw away much fewer lemons. And in case you spontaneously need the juice of half a lemon for a receipt, you always have some ready in your freezer. And if you regularly use parchment paper, you know this problem too. You want to fit it into a baking dish, but it keeps popping back up. You just can't get it to fit perfectly. All you need to do for this is to spread a bit of water in your baking dish beforehand, preferably with a pasty brush. Distribute a small amount of water everywhere, even on the side edges. Because when you now place the parchment paper in it, the water makes it stick nicely and you can align it perfectly in your baking dish. 
This way you'll never again have the problem of the parchment paper popping up on you. Look at how perfect the result is. But another problem with parchment paper we can solve right away. What do you do when you want to cut parchment paper round for a springform pen? There are two ways to do this. Either you place some parchment paper on the bottom part, put the ring on top, close it and cut around the outside. This way you've aligned it perfectly. Another method is to fold a piece of parchment paper in half twice so you have such a square. Place it once across as you can see here with me and then fold it again so you have such a funnel. With the tip of the funnel go to the center of your spring form pan and here at the edge you cut it off with scissors. If it doesn't fit perfectly in the end you just need to refold it and trim it a little more off the edge. Because when you unfold it at the end it should now fit perfectly into the spring form pan. One of the most annoying tasks in the kitchen is peeling ginger. But there's also a really brilliant trick for this. The problem is usually the small grooves that you can't easily get between. If you use a vegetable peeler you usually peel off too much of the ginger itself. And even with a knife you usually remove too much and not just the peel. Instead you should try it with a spoon because this is a brilliant trick and all you have to do is hold the ginger like this and now draw the spoon with these edge over the ginger. Because this way you really only remove the peel, hardly anything of the ginger itself is lost. And if you have small corners and grooves you can easily get them peeled as well by simply breaking them out and then going all the way around the outside. And so you've removed only the peel from the ginger and it's much faster than with any other method. If you're cooking or baking a receipt from the internet you're probably using your phone or tablet for the receipt but then you've surely had the problem of it getting dirty. Instead you should lay a small piece of clinch film over it. You can still use it as usual. But now if you spill something it's not a big deal because you can simply peel off the film and dispose of it at the end. And so your device didn't get dirty and you could save yourself the cleaning here. And if you have an empty ketchup bottle you should never throw it away. Instead clean it truly inside and if you're making pancake better you can fill it into the empty ketchup bottle. This has two advantages right away. The first advantage is that you can now perfectly store the pancake better in the fridge. So if you've made a bit too much you can store it for much longer. And when you want to make pancakes now you can also perfectly distribute this batter in the pan. Whether you want to make a large pancake or just several small ones you can perfectly portion them with the ketchup bottle. Definitely try it out for yourself. I will only do it this way in the future. But do you also know this incredibly brilliant whisk trick that the entire internet is talking about when you want to use some flour and just pour it into the bowl. You know the problem of sometimes spilling some and portioning is usually not so easy either. Instead you can use a whisk for help. Simply stick it into your flour package. This trick works every time whether you still have the flour in its package or have already filled it into a container. Go all the way down and pull the whisk back out because the floor stays perfectly caught between the individual wires. Now just go over the bowl where you want to put it and gently shake the whisk so that all the floor comes off. If you have too much on it you can of course put it back on the package this way. And as I said this works with any type of floor. But do you also know this trick with the baking powder package because you should never again just tear it open. The same by the way applies to vanilla sugar packages or similar packages of this size. Because if there's still some left and you want to close it again you should definitely do it like this. Cut off a corner as you can see with me and then cut a thinner strip afterward. It should now look like it has a small gap on the inside. As you can see here with me I can get my finger through. Because if you still have baking powder left then you should fold the top and here two or three times diagonally. And after that we take this previously cut piece and simply slide it over. Everything is fixed and the baking powder package remains closed. Do you also want to learn more secret kitchen tricks that almost no one knows? Then definitely watch the video that you see on the screen now. Click on it directly.